Yes, we're gonna see Usain Bolt's race again. Here it goes. Amazing. That guy's a champion. All right, so what we're going to study today is the mean value theorem, which is another interesting theorem about functions, but it's a little more subtle than the intermediate value theorem. So let me start by trying to understand what the mean value theorem has to say about Usain Bolt's race. All right, so let me start by sketching the graph of Usain Bolt's position function. So he started at t equals to zero, accelerated, reached a peak velocity, and finished the race at t equals 9.58 seconds. And one thing that we can calculate about Usain Bolt's race is his average velocity. So we know that the average velocity will be the difference in position divided by the difference in time. So in this case it will be 100 meters divided by 9.58 seconds, which gives approximately 10.44 meters per second. Alright, and what does the uh, mean value theorem have to say about Usain Bolt's race, well in this context we can understand the mean value theorem as stating that there must be a time, t, between 0 and 9.58 seconds, at which Usain Bolt's instantaneous velocity was exactly equal to his average velocity. Now if you think about it for a little bit, that makes sense physically. Right? If Usain Bolt had, uh, had been running the whole race at a constant velocity, then he would have been running at, running at exactly 10.44 meters per second the whole way. But of course that's impossible, right? He started at rest. So he started with initial velocity zero, so for a certain period of time he was going slower than his average velocity while he was accelerating, then at a certain point he must have gone faster than his average velocity. So the mean value theorem is stating that there is a point in between, there's a time t where he was going at exactly his average velocity. We can also understand this statement geometrically. So recall that the average velocity is given geometrically by the slope of the secant line between the two points. So in this case, we're interested in the average velocity between t equals to 0 and t equals 9.58. So if we draw the secant line here, then we know that the slope of that line will be given by the average velocity. And in this context, the mean value theorem is saying that there must be a point C between A and B such that the tangent line of the function at this point is parallel to the secant line. Why is that true? Well, the tangent line at this point, the slope of the tangent line, will be given by the instantaneous velocity at that point. So if the two lines are parallel, that means that the tangent lines are the same slope as the secant line, which means that the instantaneous velocity is the same as the average velocity, which is the statement of the mean value theorem. So looking at the graph of the position function here, I can guess that probably somewhere like here, the tangent line will be parallel to the secant line. So in other words, the slope of this line, the tangent line, will also be equal to the average velocity. So in other words, the instantaneous velocity at this point is equal to the average velocity, which is the statement of the mean value theorem. All right, so let me now formalize this statement mathematically. So let f be a function that is continuous over the closed interval between a and b, and differentiable over the open interval between a and b. Then the mean value theorem is saying that there is a number c between a and b, such that the derivative of the function at c is exactly equal to the difference quotient of that function between a and b. Now why does that reduce to the statement of the previous slide? Well the left hand side here is calculating the slope of the tangent line at this point, while the right hand side is calculating the slope of the secant line. So indeed this reduces to the statement that there exists a c such that the tangent line at this point is parallel to the secant line between the point A and B. All right, so this is a very interesting statement, has many consequences, and the proof is actually really interesting in itself, so we will see the proof in class. And in fact, as we go through the steps and the proof, we'll understand why the requirements of continuity and differentiability are essential here for the mean value theorem to be correct. So before we move on to an example, there's two comments that I wanna make. So first is that C here does not need to be unique just like for the intermediate value theorem, there may be more than one c such that the, the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. The statement of the mean value theorem is an existence statement, namely that there exists such a c, but there may be more than one. And also a second comment is that if it happens that the points a and b are such that f of a is exactly equal to f of b, then we see that the right hand side, the difference quotient is zero, so in other words the secant line is horizontal. So this, then the statement then just becomes that there must be a c between a and b such that the derivative at this point is zero, 
or in other words, the tangent line is horizontal. So this is a special case of the mean value theorem, and sometimes it, ha it is called the Rowley's theorem. It has its own name, but really is just a, a particular case of the mean value theorem, so it doesn't really need to be treated separately. All right, so let me now give you an example of what the mean value theorem is saying for a concrete function. So I chose the function f of x to be equal to x squared, which is a continuous and differentiable function, so I can apply the mean value theorem, and I'm going to look at an interval a to b. So let's pick a to be somewhere in here, say, and b to be somewhere like here. All right, so what is the mean value theorem saying? So the mean value theorem is saying that there is or there exists a c between a and b such that the derivative of the function at this point or the slope of the tangent line is equal to the difference quotient or the slope of the secant line. All right, so what does this mean geometrically? Well, I have my two points here, a, f of a, and the other point will be somewhere like here, b, f of b. And I have a secant line going through these two points. And what this is saying is that there must be a point c somewhere in between a and b such that the tangent line will be exactly parallel to the secant line. And if I look at the graph, I can see that it's probably somewhere like here. Right? If I sketch the tangent line at this point, it looks like it will be exactly parallel to the secant line. But here we can actually calculate this point precisely because we have an explicit formula for the function. Right? So I can evaluate the right-hand side here. What will I get? So f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, the function is just the square function, so I get b square minus a square over b minus a. can factor out a b minus a from the numerator. And then I can simplify the b minus a's because I'm assuming that b is not equal to a. So I'll just get b plus a for the right-hand side. As for the left-hand side, well, I know that the derivative of the function of x squared is just 2x. So in other words, the derivative evaluated at x equals to c will be equal to 2c. So the statement of the mean value theorem then becomes that 2c is equal to a plus b. Or in other words, c, the point that I'm looking for, will be equal to a plus b over 2. So what this is saying is that the point c here, so this is the point where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line, in this case will be exactly halfway between a and b. But this is a very special case. This is because this function is so nice. The x squared function is so nice. In general, it may not be halfway. In fact, there could be more than 1c, as I've mentioned previously. But for the square function, this is very nice. The point halfway between a and b for any a and any b will be exactly such that the tangent line is parallel to the secant line between a and b. All right, so let me end this video with an interesting question. Suppose I train like crazy and I try to beat a St. Ball's 100 meters record. So we go on a duel. We both run a 100 meters race together at the same time. And yes, yes, you won't believe it, but I've trained really, really hard, and we actually both managed to finish the race at exactly the same record time of 9.58 seconds. Pretty amazing. Now here's the question. Is it true that at a certain time during the race, both Usain and I must have had exactly the same velocity? That's not obvious at all, right? Because of course we didn't run the whole race at the same velocity. Probably Usain started a little faster and then because of my amazing training, I managed to catch up. Maybe I beat him a little bit and he caught up and we ended up finishing the race at exactly the same time. But what I'm asking here is whether there's a time at the race where we both had exactly the same velocity. Good question. Think about it.